The VW ID3 is in many ways a Tesla killer. Why is that? Well, simply because it's a mass-produced all-electric car that's readily available and one that also comes in at around £10,000 less than the equivalent Tesla Model 3. But suffice to say, I don't think VW are too concerned about Tesla, purely because they are looking within their own line of cars in order to provide a different option to consumers. The ID3 is indeed based on its most popular car, the VW Beetle. No, sorry, the VW Golf. <laughs> now, the VW Golf is one of the most popular cars across Europe, and it's no surprise to see that the ID3 has got a same sort of um, form factor and dimensions. Now, the VW Golf starts from around £23,000 brand new, whilst the ID3 that we've got over here starts from just shy of £30,000. If you'd like a detailed breakdown between the different level trims from the ID line and indeed to see how it compares to some of its competitors, do check out our detailed written review. It will be down in the description below. Also down there, you'll find links to our social media platforms. So, for example, if you're on Instagram or Twitter, do give us a follow so it gives you the chance to keep up with the latest news and reviews. So kicking things off, let's talk about the exterior design. And here, it's very much a subjective matter, but I'm really not a fan of the grey base paint that the ID3 comes in at. Of course, my family and friends disagreed with me. They actually thought that it gave it kind of a modern look. So I'd be intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comments section below. Of course, you can change this. It will cost you a £620 option. Let's say if you want to go for the light blue model, which in my opinion looks a little bit modern and a little bit more, well, fresh in terms of a look. As for the front design, it's got this bubble shaped design. I did reference the VW Beetle and that's purely because I actually own one of the original VW Beetles. And here I feel that the kind of bubble shaped design is very reminiscent to that vehicle. This is not only done for design purposes, but it's also some practical. You see a lot of electric cars, like the Tesla Model 3, for example, that's got this bubble-shaped design at the front, and that is truthfully to reduce the drag coefficient in order to improve energy efficiency and getting the most out of the battery pack. Now, at the side, you've got 18-inch alloys that come as standard. Personally, again, I'm not a fan of the look. You can customize this. It will cost you a pretty penny to change the, the rims. However, again, this has been done to reduce the drag coefficient and improve the aerodynamics. Now at the rear of the car I think is where the car kind of sh um, shines because it really re is reminiscent to the VW Golf which is obviously one of the most popular cars as I mentioned before and here the car has got this kind of sporty look but also one that's quite familiar and also very practical. Now a small little point to make is the windscreen. Now normally I wouldn't really talk about this because it's nothing too special but in the ID3 I feel that the windscreen is actually pretty large to say the least and this is great for visibility and likewise with the side um, windows as well. However this does also attract more of those little rocks that come and fly off from, let's say, another person's uh, tires. And as a result, you might hear more of those little rocks hitting your windscreen. At least that's what I found when I was doing uh, my driving tests. Now, stepping inside the vehicle, the quirkiness doesn't stop. In order to initiate the ignition, you have to push down on the brake pedal for it to kind of initiate the car and to switch it on. Now, the weirdness of this is definitely going to take some people by surprise. For example, if you were to step outside of the vehicle as a driver, the car will automatically power down. Now, while there might be some other passengers in your vehicle, what you'll have to find is that they can't use the climate controls unless they were to reach over to the steering column and press the start and stop button, which is a little bit awkwardly placed. Furthermore, the same could be said for the infotainment system, which powers down again as soon as the driver steps out side. Now these are small little quirks but some things that might actually baffle a few drivers coming to the ID3 for the first time and it definitely caught me off guard in comparison to other all-electric cars that I've driven. Now in the same sort of vein Volkswagen have also overcomplicated some basic operations at least in my opinion. Here for example if you were to adjust the windows they're all four electronically adjustable however what you'll find is that if you want to adjust the rear ones you'll have to press a separate button Button, which will then initiate the two levers that are available for you to then adjust the rear ones. There is no four levers available. Just a small little point, but something that can be a bit of annoyance, specifically if you are blazing out music and you're rolling to your friends and you want all four windows down at the same time, 
you're not going to be able to do that. <laughs> On a more serious note, however, the steering wheel as well has been kind of reworked. Now, it's a little bit of a double-edged sword. On one aspect, I like the haptic feedback that you get with the buttons. However, they are also a little bit odd to get used to, specifically if you've come from, let's say, physical buttons in the past or, let's say, little volume wheels. The same could be said about the controls by the 10-inch infotainment display. They are capacitive buttons. I just really don't understand the use case of these capacitive buttons. If you want to adjust the climate, you have to kind of tap on it or kind of try and scroll on it. Why couldn't they just be simple buttons? It would have just been a lot more simpler or even a little knob which would adjust the volume wheel. It just makes it a lot more simpler. This is specifically of importance if you are like me in the UK and you might be able to see it and my camera might be picking it up in terms of rain, that if you had wet fingers trying to adjust this, it's just not going to pick it up properly. Whereas if it just had buttons, then you wouldn't be faced with any problems. Now, despite the fact the controls aren't very intuitive, the actual infotainment system and the menu system that is integrated within the ID3 is actually fantastic. I really like the fact that it also integrates Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but not only just integrates it, but also uses the instrument cluster in order to utilize the information that's used. So for example, if you were to start a navigation, it will immediately show on your instrument cluster on a side panel, which you can then slide to, make it a little bit bigger, or make it smaller if you prefer to see your speedometer, for example. Speaking about the instrument cluster, it's a small little five inch display, gives you all the key information that you need, no complaints whatsoever. To the right of the instrument cluster, there is a um, gear selector, kind of similar to the BMW i3 if you've ever tried it. It does take a little bit of getting used to. You might be reaching down on your left-hand side, at least in the UK, to look for a gear selector, but there's nothing there. But it, once you get your head around it, it's pretty intuitive. And we'll touch upon B mode in just a bit. There's also the headlight buttons, although they're all automatic, but there is some quick buttons over here, which are also capacitive uh, buttons. Again, bit of an odd inclusion, a little bit of a weird placement, but nevertheless, that's what Volkswagen have chosen. Now, the reason why I think Volkswagen have gotten rid of the traditional gear selector and put it by the steering wheel is because it frees up some space by the center console. Here, you've got two cup holder spaces and two really well-designed places to place, let's say, a smartphone or a small size purse or a wallet. It also does support wireless charging, by the way, so if your smartphone is compatible with that, it's a great way to just charge your smartphone without even thinking about it. Now, below that, there's a retractable compartment, which then reveals even more storage space, and there's also two USB Type-C ports. It's worth bearing in mind that the Type-C ports don't have an adapter, so you might have to buy a Type-C to Type-A adapter. Furthermore, there's no 12-volt socket for you to, let's say, place a dash cam but again, you can use a converter to type C in order to drive that amount of power to let's say a dash cam. Now it is also worth bearing in mind the reason you might want to connect up to the system is for you to play back, let's say your music, or of course use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Now here, the, the car that we're in is the Life, it's the base model, and that comes with a four plus one audio system. You can get the six plus one audio system as well in the more expensive trims. Now, if you'd like a more detailed breakdown of the audio system of of the VW ID3, do check it out on your pop-up banner or indeed in the description below. What I'll say in a nutshell is that the audio system is actually pretty good, although does away with some sort of useful features, for example, a subwoofer, which seems to have been taken off the list, at least in the rear boot. Now, towards the rear of the center console, you've also got two USB Type-C ports, which essentially allows your three rear occupants to charge their devices. Indeed, the car will seat five occupants in total, and I must say, in terms of legroom and headroom, it's plentiful. It's actually one of the largest rear cabins that I've sat in, in at least in terms of an all-electric hatchback. Here, as I'm just under six foot, I've got no issues when it comes to legroom. And as for headroom, again, if you're six foot four or something, Thing, I think you'll sit here comfortably. The only thing worth bearing in mind is that the angle of the seat is quite odd. It's kind of like a diagonally shaped, it's not quite straight, which means you kind of sit quite further down and that's also due to the battery design that Volkswagen have chosen. Now, despite that, these seats themselves are pretty comfortable. They're not as cushiony soft as the likes of the Nissan Leaf. However, they are still very comfortable no matter where you sit in the cabin. At the front, you've also got adjustable seats, although it's a shame to see a 30 
thousand pound car not including electronically adjustable seats there are also some armrests at the front which makes it a little bit more convenient and unfortunately that's not the same case at the rear there's no pull down compartment over here so for example if you don't have a fifth occupant you can't have a kind of armrest or some cup holders a lot small little touch here i think would have been quite nice from vw to integrate now in terms of storage space it's plentiful around the cabin where you've got four compartment storage spaces within each of the four doors specifically at the front where you can fit also a 500 milliliter bottle where it really shines however is in its boot capacity it's got 385 liters of usable storage space which is one of the largest ones that you can find in an all electric hatchback it is only trumped by the nissan leaf and with the seats down it extends up to 1607 liters which is actually really impressive and again competes with the likes of the renault zoe and the nissan leaf and only beaten by the likes of the hyundai ionic electric the only thing i'm not a fan of however is that unlike some of its competitors Volkswagen haven't integrated a place where you can place your charging cables given this car was essentially designed on the MEB platform which is an all-electric platform and of course that's to do with the powertrain and the way the battery is operating it would have been nice to see a place where you can actually stow away your cables instead you're left with using them and placing them in a bag or just let's say leaving them at home if you're not going to need the charging cables when you're on the go. Now I did say I'd get onto visibility and ironically look how much rain there is outside hopefully you'll see it through the dash cam. Now the visibility is one of the key factors on the ID3 because not only is its bonnet quite small where it allows you to really see in front of the vehicle so it's not quite like a Mercedes SLS uh, AMG but it also means that on the side where you've got the windows there's kind of like a cutout by the A pillars making it just a little bit easier just to check your corners to say let's say for an on coming cyclist for example so I like the little integration although I do think that's mainly d done because if that wasn't there you essentially wouldn't see a large portion of the front um, section of the road now it is also very easy to drive so we're just going to set off over here and what I feel is that straight away when you get in the car it just feels like a golf just exactly like a golf which is exactly what you want because the Golf is just a really great car to drive on the whole and just is very easy for those people coming from the Golf for the first time. What they'll find is that just the car feels very familiar. That's just due to the setup that VW have kind of opted for. Now the driver's feel, I would say, is one of the biggest things for me when it comes to all electric cars. Often what you'll find is that specifically all electric hatchbacks are front wheel drives and it's only the Honda E for example and a few other vehicles out there, a very small handful of them, which actually have rear-wheel drive setups and that's what Volkswagen has opted for. A rear-wheel drive setup on the ID3 makes it so much fun to drive around country roads. So if you're chucking it around at 50 miles an hour around a country road, what you'll find is that the car does grip and it feels like it's just sitting well planted on the ground and doesn't feel like it's skidding around. Something that could be said, for example, about, let's say, Volkswagen's cheaper alternative, the, um, the, or, the, or even Seat, the Seat Mi Electric or the VW E-Up, which aren't exactly as sturdy feeling as the ID3. Now, similarly over here, I think Volkswagen have done a good job in terms of the suspension setup. It's not too stiff in the respect of its, well, being too hard when you're driving around potholes or speed bumps but equally it's also not too soft where you'll be suffering from too much body roll when you're going at speed around corners. What I'm trying to say over here is that Volkswagen have found a good median between a soft and stiff suspension and integrated it within the ID3. I will say for those people coming from a VW Golf, namely the older variant uh, vehicles or the non-GTI or TDI uh, variants, is that the car will feel a little bit harder than those cars because they are really they're really set up to have a quite soft suspension and as a result make the those cars feel just a little bit more comfortable to drive within inner city commutes. Now when it comes to performance the car has 150 kilowatts of power which equates to around 201 brake horsepowers. Now what this really means is the fact that you've got 310 newton meters of torque at your disposal at any given time which is one of the biggest selling points for any um, electric vehicle over their IC based alternatives. Here the car is not only supremely fun to drive and as I mentioned before due to its suspension setup but also means that if you want that power you get it at any point in time you don't have to wait for an engine to kick in. Now on that note the car will get from 0 to 60 miles an hour at least from my test using the V-Box Sport 
in 6.45 seconds, which is plenty fun. And given the car size, you really do feel it a little bit more than you would on, let's say, a larger sized SUV or uh, even, let's say, the, the likes of an, a, an estate. So what this means is that the car is fun to drive, stays well planted, and you get instant amount of torque at your disposal at any given time. In other words, I feel it's a better car to drive than the very popular VW Golf, which is, well, quite a big statement to say the least. Now for the German viewers out there, the car is limited to 99 miles an hour. So if you want to bomb it down on the Autobahn, you can't quite do so as much as you would on, let's say a Golf GTI. But nevertheless, 99 miles an hour is plentiful for a lot of consumers out there. And specifically in the UK where the speed limit's 70 miles an hour, I don't think that's a problem at all. Okay, well now we get onto the business side of the review and that's really to do with its all electric range. And here is where the ID3 actually shines. Now I was very impressed with the Seat Me Electric and the VW E up for the price, about 20,000 pounds. They got around 130 to 140 odd miles in my tests. So a little bit below their claim. And similarly, I was very impressed by the Nissan Leaf and the Renault Zoe, which hits around 200 miles. Well, this car using the same testing methodology gets around 230 miles, which is very impressive for an all electric hatchback. In fact, it's probably one of the only cars in the world for its size that can achieve that amount of mileage on a single charge. Now that is bearing in mind, I am driving the Pro Performance variant, which is a 50 kilowatt hour battery variant, but you can get the 77 kilowatt hour variant, which will naturally give you more mileage. So if you're looking to hit over 300 miles, you might want to consider that model instead, although that will set you back around 38,000 pounds, if not a little bit more. So in the grand scheme of things, the ID3 in its base level model, as in 29,000 pounds or just under 30,000 pounds, will net you around 230 miles. And that to me is extremely impressive, especially when you compare it with some of its competitors. For example, the Vauxhall Corsa E, which doesn't achieve anywhere near that figure, or the Honda E, or even the Mini Electric. The ID3 really does do well in where it really counts when it comes for an all electric car. Now, where it doesn't really excel, in my opinion, is when it comes to regenerative braking. Here, the car has a pretty light kind of one pedal approach. In other words, you're still gonna have to resort to that brake pedal. And yes, that includes you shifting up, or should I say flicking to B mode on the uh, gear selector by the steering wheel. What I'm trying to say over here is that some of its competitors, which are not exactly based on a pure electric platform, as in they're not built as a pure electric car, they're built as a gasoline variant with an all electric powertrain. What I want to say over here is that I just wish that Volkswagen had integrated more levels of regenerative braking and furthermore, one that would actually really allow you to have a one pedal approach such as you'd get in the Nissan Leaf or the BMW i3, which is relatively harsh. So it's just a shame not to see that. And furthermore, the fact that you still have to enable it each time you step inside the car is quite cumbersome to say the least. Now in order for you to charge the car, Volkswagen have integrated a CCS port, which is capable of a hundred kilowatt input charge, which allows you to essentially go from 15 to 80% in under 35 minutes, which is nice to see. Now, if you were to go on a type two port, in other words, a seven kilowatt input charger that you'd find in the home charger unit or a workplace charger, what you'll find here is the car will take around nine and a half hours from zero to 100%. Now, I don't suspect a lot of people will have to do that on a regular basis, but it's just worth bearing in mind that you might still need to plan your trip a little bit better if you don't have access to a DC rapid charger. Now, finally, on to safety systems. And here, I think Volkswagen have kind of got a little bit of a mixed bag because on one element, I do like the fact that the adaptive cruise control does exactly what it says on the tin and it works pretty well. And the emergency brake assist actually works quite nicely by the fact that it integrates an LED light which goes across the dashboard, therefore kind of indicates and gives you a visual indication, not only it taking action and you know taking control, but also showing you, hey, there's a danger that's coming up, you pay attention to the road. So I just really like that element that Volkswagen have integrated. The thing is, what I don't like is the lane keep assistance, which 
doesn't really do a great job at finding the lines and keeping you centered. It just still feels like a little bit of a basic system. And furthermore, what I don't like about it is that for those people who don't want lane keep assistance, you can't disable it permanently. So each time you step inside the car, you're gonna to have to go through the infotainment system and disable it, which is just a bit annoying. Why do I have to have that setting enabled when I don't want it? It should remember my last use setting and essentially allow me to disable it permanently and not have it used. Simple as, simple as that. I just wish that Volkswagen maybe integrate this in a future firmware update, which obviously this car is capable of given it's an all electric car. It's able of getting firmware updates over the air and therefore you might get some features taken away or indeed improved if, well, Volkswagen decide to do that. So please Volkswagen, disable that feature. I don't like it. Now, one thing that can't change, however, is the hardware safety. And by that, I mean blind spot assist, a rear view camera are not integrated within the baseline models. In fact, you're gonna to have to spend upwards of 36,000 pounds to get those features. As such, the baseline model gets a front and rear parking sensors, which is nice, but at 30,000 pounds, I would have expected a rear view camera to come as standard. I don't really feel that that extra little small camera module would have added too much cost to Volkswagen's overall budget but I'm not exactly doing Volkswagen's budgets. But anyway, I just think that it would have been nice to have a rear view camera. And this all leads me on to my verdict. What do I make about the VW ID3? Well, quite frankly, from the exterior, it's got a little bit of a quirky design. And within the car, it's got a little bit of overcomplicated technology and basic operations, which I think Volkswagen have gone just a little step too far. However, it's otherwise pretty perfect. It can seat five occupants, it's very roomy, it's got a good sort of boot capacity, and indeed also is very fun and easy to drive, and most importantly, has got a claimed range of around 260 miles, which from our tests gives around 230 miles on a single charge, which in this respect is one of the longest range small sized all electric vehicles that you can find out there on the market, which really leads itself to be a fantastic competitor with the likes of the Nissan Leaf, the Renault Zoe, and of course, the more expensive Tesla Model 3. This gives the ID3, well, an easy kind of win in this category, and as a result, gets our best buy award. Of course, that's just our opinion and thoughts about it, so I'd be intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comments section below. And of course, if you're looking to get this car or one of its competitors, we're intrigued to see which one you choose. Now, if you like this video, give it a like. Of course, we'd very much appreciate you subscribing to the channel to see more. And of course, favorite and share if you feel this video will be helpful for someone making an informed purchasing decision. I've been Chris from Total EV. Take care and goodbye.